What's going on guys? CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the all new Crimson Canyon NUC from Intel. So if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I love these mini PCs, do a lot of single board computer reviews and small PC reviews. Recently, I've got a hold of a couple of the Bean Canyon NUCs, and I absolutely love them. The i7 version is the one I've been using every day, and it's a beast for being such a small machine. The CPU in the Crimson Canyon here has nothing on the Bean Canyon CPUs, but what it lacks in CPU performance, it should theoretically make up in GPU performance, because we have a dedicated AMD RX 540 in this tiny machine. The Crimson Canyon NUX come fully pre-configured. We already have RAM installed. It is LP DDR4, so it is non-user upgradable. If you go out and buy one of these, I suggest getting the 8GB model instead of the 4. It also has Windows Home pre-installed and everything you're going to need to get up and running except for a mouse, keyboard, and a monitor. But like most of Intel's mini PCs, they don't come cheap. I actually paid $419 for the 8GB model, and this was on sale on Amazon. They usually retail for about $550. So if you're on a tight budget and you're looking for the most bang for your buck, I would definitely step away from these. I would build a used part machine from Craigslist, eBay, sometimes you can even find used parts on Amazon. But if you're looking for a super small form factor machine that performs decently well for what you're getting, this could be for you. I'm going to do a quick rundown on the specs here. So this is known as the Nook 8 NUC 8i3CYSM. You can just search Crimson Canyon online and you'll find tons of information about it. So for the CPU, we have the 15 watt Cannon Lake 10 nanometer i3-8121U. Two cores, four threads at 2.2 gigahertz, but it will turbo up to 3.2. What really got me interested in wanting to pick one of these up for review was the GPU. We have a dedicated AMD Radeon RX 540, two gigabytes of DDR5, it's not shared with the system memory. Boost clock up to 1500 megahertz. I understand that this is a low-end GPU, but to have it all packed in this 5x5 block is pretty amazing in my opinion. So like I mentioned, there's two versions. You can get the 4GB version or the 8. I opted for the 8. We have 8GB of LP DDR4, 2400MHz RAM. This is soldered to the board. It is non-user upgradable. The whole kit comes with a 1TB 2.5-inch 5400 RPM drive, and to tell you the truth, sometimes it can be painfully slow. But there's also an open M.2 for PCIe SSDs, and it also supports Optane. A total of four USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, two on the front, two on the rear, and if you really needed to add a couple extra USB 2.0s, there's internal headers for those. Wireless AC, 9560, Bluetooth 5.0, Gigabit Ethernet, and two full-size HDMI 2.0 Bs on the rear, so we can do dual displays 4K 60Hz out, unfortunately no USB Type-C or Thunderbolt 3. So with the specs out of the way, I want to get into performance. Now I did do a teardown and I'm going to leave it at the end of this video so you can just see the internals. I wanted to take a look at this 10 nanometer chip myself and see how the RX 540 was soldered to the board. And for all you emulation lovers out there, sorry, this video does not contain any. I will have my dedicated emulation video on the Crimson Canyon coming up very shortly. So keep an eye out on the channel for that. So the first thing I did when I got everything set up was run a Cinebench. I knew I wasn't going to score very high here because this is only a two core CP with four threads so we're not going to render that many frames at one time. And we only scored around a 300. So seeing what the CPU scored here in R15 I got a little worried so I had to run a Geekbench. And to my surprise it actually scored better than I thought it would. Single core 4140, multi core 8365. For reference, the new Bean Canyon NUC i7 version scores a 5,397 single and an 18,823 in the multi-core. But that chip also turbos up to 4.5 gigahertz. It's a quad core with four threads. Moving over to some native 4K video playback using Kodi. I think it's going to perform fine with what we have here. Now if you want to stream anything from Hulu, Netflix, YouTube in 4K, this is going to handle it just fine as long as your internet connection can handle it. But what about native playback from the stock 5400 RPM drive? This is Big Buck Bunny, 4K, 60 FPS, buttery smooth.
Next up, I'm going to try a very high bit rate. This is 400 megabits per second, 4K, HEVC, 10-bit, MKV. Now, I'm not exactly sure what's causing these issues here. It could be the read speed from the hard drive itself, but this is a very, very high bit rate video. You're going to be hard pressed to find anything else like this. So we're going to move down a little bit. Same thing, but at 200 megabits per second. So for 4K Blu-rays, it calls for 10-bit H.265, and it allows a maximum bit rate of 128 megabits per second. You could definitely run a 4K Blu-ray on this hardware. We're doing the 200 megabits right now with no trouble at all. So this is native playback. If you want to do streaming, like I mentioned, this thing's going to handle Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, anything in 4K as long as you have a decent internet connection. But what about using this as a Plex server with all the transcoding going on with this 10 nanometer i3? I've set it up here. I'm using my iPhone. We have that same Big Buck Bunny 4K 60fps file. It's going to take a second to buffer, but all of the transcoding is done by the CPU in the NUC. As you can see, as soon as I hit play on my phone, my CPU just spiked to 100%. Now, I wouldn't recommend this as a Plex server. It can be done, but I don't know how many streams are going to be able to be pushed from this unit. If you absolutely need to use a NUC as a Plex server, go with the Bean Canyon i3 or i5. The i5 is going to be your best choice. So one of the main reasons I wanted to test this thing out was for PC gaming. Now in the advertising for this, which they didn't do much of because I think they understood what they had here was a little overpriced for the first release, they mentioned 1080p gaming mainstream titles, especially eSports. The RX 540 is far from a high-end GPU. It's a very low-end GPU, but it should perform better than any built-in Intel UHD graphics. So the first game I tested was Overwatch, one of my favorite games of all time. This is 1080p, low settings, 100% resolution scaling, average FPS, 68. Feels good, looks great, it's fully playable here. But I did want to get a little bit more out of it because we do get some dips below 60. So I dropped the resolution scaling down to 75%. We're getting an average of 86 FPS. This is really nice, feels good, and it still looks great. Turn V-Sync on and you'll have a steady 60 FPS gaming experience out of this one. Next up, PUBG, because they did mention eSport games and a lot of people love playing this. Personally, I don't play it. This is very low settings, 1080p, for the price I paid, I don't want to go to 720p. And to tell you the truth, I don't think we'd get a constant 60 at 720p low settings. Rocket League 1080p in performance mode. Now it runs great until there's a big explosion. I noticed some dips. As you can see, my minimum FPS dropped down to 26. I don't know if I can chalk up this performance to badly optimized drivers because I'm using the AMD Adrenaline driver, the latest one as of making this video. So far, I'm a little disappointed. I mean, the frame rate is great here, but those huge dips are killing me. Here's Doom, 720p, lowest settings, 75% resolution scale. I'm using the Vulkan API. I did try OpenGL, but it was way worse than this. By the end of this match, the average FPS was 51, but it's all over the place. I even see it spike as high as 85 FPS in some places, and then we go down to the minimum of 35. So I had to whip out some older games. Here's the original Skyrim. This isn't the remastered version or anything like that. 1080p, maximum settings. You could play this all day at 60 FPS, 1080p, but this game came out years ago. Still a great game, and definitely worth picking back up if you stop playing it for a little while. So some older games that are going to run fine on a system like this are Source Engine games, like Half-Life 2 or Left 4 Dead 2, which I'm running here. Runs very smooth, this is at the maximum settings, 1080p. Looks great, and still a really fun game. Fallout 4, 1080p, the lowest settings I could go, were averaging around 36 FPS.
And finally, Grand Theft Auto 5, 1080p. I got it on normal settings, which is pretty much low for this game. I've been playing for around 10 minutes. We're averaging 52 FPS. But the stutters and the low FPS do happen in this game also. As you can see, we did dip down to 11 FPS, and this happens every once in a while when you're coming around a corner just trying to load something in the distance. So overall, it does perform very well for being such a small, low-power machine, except for those dips we're getting in most of these games, and hopefully that can be fixed over time with driver updates. I wouldn't suggest buying one of these specifically for gaming. You could build a machine with a 2400G for around the same price you're going to pick one of these up, and you're going to get better performance and upgradability down the road. I did mention I'd do a teardown, and I do have another video coming up specifically geared towards emulation on this thing. I have been doing a little testing, and it's turned out really well so far. So if you're interested in seeing more on the Crimson Canyon, definitely subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on so you know when I upload my next video. And if you're interested in seeing anything specific running on this unit, just let me know in the comments below and I'll throw it in with the next video. Um, I'm kind of stuck with this now, I've already torn it down, I can't return it, I'm not going to get my money back, so I might as well make a few more videos. In the end, I think the whole idea is really awesome to have a small form factor gaming PC, but it's just not there yet. Maybe the next iteration? This was their first attempt with a 10 nanometer and a dedicated 540 GPU. Maybe they're going to come out down the road with an i5 and a 560 or a 570? You never know. I really appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to check out the links in the description. If you're interested in picking one up, I'm going to leave an Amazon link. If not, there's an Intel link down there so you can go check out more specs on the Crimson Canyon. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.